Hello, eighth graders. This week, we're going to be starting out with lesson six, and we're going to be looking at triangles and side lengths of triangles. Everything we've been doing um, so far with areas of squares and side lengths um, will come into play here. But um, here's a joke that I always put on my um, board at school, but since you can't see that board right now, here it is. Why is the obtuse triangle always upset? Because it is never right. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, we are going to be seeing different types of triangles as we go on here. So here we go. As always, you could pick any of these um, to be the one that doesn't belong, but here's some reasons for each of them. In triangle A, it's the only one with two sides that are the same length. In triangle B, it's the only one that is not a right triangle. In triangle C, it's the only one... Hmm, this one's a little bit tougher, but you could come up with something like it's the only one that has a side length of one, for example. Um, and D, it's the only one where every side has a length that is a rational number. When we're looking at triangles in this lesson, we are going to be finding the side lengths of triangles. Um, some side lengths will be easy, like that length right there is just three. Um, other lengths that are angled, you may have to draw a square like we have before. And then you have that tilted square that you can use. Um, you could find the area of the, of the inside tilted square, and then you could find the side length. This is what that um, previous triangle would look like if we added squares onto each side and then found the area of the square. And then from there, we could find the side lengths. So that's what we'll be doing as we go forward. Okay, so we have three different triangles, D, E, and F. And let's first work on filling out the first table where we just find the side lengths of each. So triangle D, um, I could go ahead and draw those squares. Now the side length of A there is pretty easy, but you can still draw the square to help you out. Um, I'm gonna draw this square here and then draw the square for C. Now remember, um, when you're drawing those squares, double check to make sure that you really did draw a square. And the way that I do that is that when I look at the nice square that I end up with, that each side of those um, outside triangles that I'm gonna be subtracting, make sure that those have the same length. So here I have one and three for each of those. Um, so go ahead and just find the lengths for D. Here we go. Okay, so for side C, I drew this big triangle, that one would have, or this big square, that one has an area of 16. I would subtract off six for all these triangles around the outside. That gives me an area um, of 10 for the square, which means that the side length of C would be the square root of 10. And down here, big square has an area of four, subtract off two for the corners. And my um, area would be two, which means the side length for B is the square root of two. So over here, I'm going to fill these in, and there we go. On triangle E, um, sides for B and A were pretty easy, um, one and two. And then for side C, I drew my big square around my smaller square. Um, I'd have an area of nine, subtract off four for the um, triangles in the corners, and end up with five, which means C is, has a length of the square root of five. Again, in triangle F, Side A was easy to figure out. Side C, um, I got to be the square root of five. And then if you notice, side B is gonna be the same thing. And so I end up with two square root of five and the square root of five. Now in the next table, we're going to square each of those side lengths. So for triangle D, two squared would be four. The square root of two squared is just two and the square root of 10 squared is just 10. And I keep filling those in, and it's gonna look like this. Now, number four here is a biggie, and I want you looking at this um, table where we squared the side lengths. Let's try it on your own and start again when you're ready. The big thing we wanna notice here is that for triangle E, if I add together the sides for A squared and B squared, it actually ends up equaling the side for C squared. On the next ones here, I'm gonna help you out with the side lengths, figuring those out. Um, so there they are, and go ahead and fill in both of your tables, and then answer numbers four and five. All right, once you have those tables filled in, um, for number four, the big thing you should notice for triangle Q is that if you notice the side lengths for A squared 
and b squared, if you add them together, is going to equal c squared, and that doesn't work for the other ones. Now, what do triangle E and Q have in common? E was from the previous problem, and again, if you take the side lengths of a squared plus b squared, it's going to equal c squared. This is the big thing here, guys. This is the Pythagorean theorem. We'll go over spelling and everything later, um, but it only works for right triangles that you're going to see, and um, we're going to be using it a lot in the next few days. Okay, in activity three here, this is where we will start using the Pythagorean theorem. There's how you spell it. And we're going to use these three triangles and figure out for which triangles does the Pythagorean theorem hold true. In other words, for which triangles does the sides a squared plus side b squared equals the side c squared. And so we have our triangle P, side A is the square root of 8, side B, we can see it's going to be the same thing, the square root of 8, and side C is 4 units long. And so we're going to see, does A squared plus B squared really equal C squared? Every time you do a problem with the Pythagorean theorem, write it down first. Write out this and then fill in what you know. So I know that A is the square root of 8, and then I have to square it. B is the square root of 8, and then I have to square it. And then C is 4, and we're going to square it. The square root of 8 squared is just 8. The square root of 8 squared is just 8. And we check to see, does 8 plus 8 equal 16? Yes, it does. And so for this triangle, the Pythagorean theorem holds true. Okay, on um, triangle Q, again, start out by writing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Fill in what you know, and then work to see if this is true. Now, side C, it's at an angle, so you're going to have to draw a really big square and figure out the length of C and see if it makes this true. Go ahead. Okay, I filled in what I know. A is the square root of 10, B is the square root of 40. I have to square both of those. And then I don't know what C is. So I drew my tilted square. I drew my big square around it. Area of the big square is 64. Subtract off the area of the corners. That would be 14. And that's going to equal an area of 50 for that square, which means that C, the length, the side length, would be the square root of 50. And again, I'm just going to see if this is true. Square root of 10 squared is 10. Square root of 40 squared is 40. Square root of 50 squared is 50. 10 plus 40 equals 50. So yes, it is true. Okay, you're going to try this one on your own. Um, they give you the lengths for B, C, and then A is easy to see that it's 4 units long. Fill in what you know for your Pythagorean theorem and see if it makes it true. Okay, so what I end up with is 16 plus 17 equals 25. That does not work. So, no, this one would be false. The Pythagorean theorem does not work in this case. Now, if you notice, the reason that it doesn't work here is that this one is not a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. The relationship we saw today for right triangles, only right triangles, was that the sides a squared plus b squared will equal c squared. And we're referring to a right triangle that looks like this one here on your screen. Sides a and b are the two sides connected to your right angle. They're called the legs. This is important vocabulary. And side c is opposite of that right angle, and it's called the hypotenuse. Really weird word, but that's what it's called. Make sure you have this written down in your book so that you can refer to it later on.